Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on selecting a random sample without replacement using Microsoft Excel. I have here in this Excel worksheet fictitious data. I have a participant ID number. It starts with 1001 and ends with 1100. So I have 100 records. And then I have a score variable that ranges from a minimum of 20 to a maximum of 80. In this Excel workbook, I'm using a subroutine that's connected to this button. It's labeled Draw Random Sample. that will allow me to select a range. I'm going to refer to that range as the population. And then to indicate a number of records that I want to draw from that population, a sample size. And this will be a random sample, and it'll be without replacement. So if I were to select 1001 through 1010, I would not have any duplicates in the random sample, which of course means that the sample size cannot exceed the size of the population. And I've built in a safeguard into the subroutine so that I cannot select, say, 10 records here and then ask for a sample size of 11 because that function could not be completed, as that is not possible to do. So to show you how this works, I'm going to click on Draw Random Sample. And you can see first it indicates with this input box to select a range from which to draw the sample. So I'm going to choose the first 15 participant ID numbers, so A1 through A15. Click OK. Another input box comes up, and it says Input Sample Size. So let's say I want to draw a sample of 10 for my population of 15. I click OK. And I'm given two variables. One are all the row numbers from the random sample. And the other is the actual value in the cell. So as you can see, for example, it randomly selected 15, row 15. And that participant ID number was 1015. If I were to draw another random sample, you can see it clears columns G and H, and I can select another sample, and it'll generate the same information. So this time I chose the first 17, and my sample size is 5, and it returns 5 randomly selected rows and the corresponding ID numbers. So now I'm going to move over to the Visual Basic Editor to show you how I constructed the subroutine. It's Alt F11. So you can see here is the subroutine that I'm using here. And I'm going to rebuild this partially by using copy and paste in a new subroutine that I'm going to start below this current subroutine. And I'll just be using copy and paste for some of these lines because they're long lines of code. So first I'm going to name the new subroutine. So just be sub and then the old one here you can see is named select random sample so I'm just going to call this one random sample now you can see when I type random sample in and hit enter it automatically puts the end sub at the end so first I'm going to, need to declare some of the variables that I'll be using in the subroutine so I'm just going to paste these in and explain them so I have the population as a range, the last row, the first row, and the sample size as long, unique as Boolean, and I'll be using that to make sure that there's no duplicates, and then I, D, and N also as long. So as this subroutine starts, the first thing I want to do is clear the data from any previous use of the subroutine. So the other, in this case, row numbers and ID numbers. So I'm going to do that by specifying sheets sampling, that's the name of the sheet, dot range, g colon g dot clear, and down here, h colon h dot clear. That's going to clear columns g and h of any values that may be in there. Next, I'm going to use an input box. And this is a good way to specify a range or gather other data. I could use a user form here, 
but the only thing I need to collect is the range and the sample size. So I'm just going to use the input box feature. So first, it'll be set population. So this is a range to equal application dot input box. And then I have the title here in quotation marks. And then you can see it says type colon equal sign eight. This means that it's a range. Next, I'm going to want to gather the sample size. So I'm going to move down to the next line. And again, use an input box. This is sample size equals application dot input box, the title, which is input sample size. And notice the type is set to one. That's a numeric value. Now I want to put in place that safeguard so that the sample size cannot be greater than the number of cells selected. So I'm going to do that with an if statement. So you can see here we have if population dot count. So this is the number of cells that are selected as the population is less than the sample size. Then the safeguard takes effect. The sample size cannot exceed the population size. It's a VB OK only plus VB information and it'll exit the subroutine. You see that right there. It'll exit the subroutine. And then of course, whenever you have an if, you need to have an end if. The population count can equal the sample size, and it of course can be greater than the sample size, but it cannot be less than the sample size. So next, I'm going to add code that designates a value last row and first row, so that later on the function I can select a random number between those values. So this will be three lines of code. Set r equals population, and then last row is r dot rows dot count plus r dot row minus one, and first row is r dot row. Then for the last part of the subroutine, these lines of code, starting here with four, they will select a random number, a random value from the population, and then we'll check that against the other random values that are already drawn. And if it matches one of those values, it'll continue on with the loop and select another value. So this will avoid the duplication of values. So we have for i equals one to sample size, and you can see that ends down here at next i. So inside this for next loop, we have a do loop. And you see we have the word do and the word loop. Now this will just continue on unless something stops it. And you can see we have the exit do command in here. So first we set the value unique, which is boolean, to true. And then we have n equal the application dot worksheet function dot ran between between the first row that was determined up here and the last row. Then we move into another for next loop. It's for d equals one to i minus one and then next d. So this is the next for next statement. And you can see here that if cells d seven, the coordinates equal n then unique equals false. So the value is not unique. If that happens, it'll exit this for statement. Because unique will be set to false, it'll skip this next if statement that exits the loop, and it'll go back and it'll continue with the loop. So it'll just keep going until it finds a unique value. And then the sheet is selected and cells i comma seven equal n, that's the line. This again is, are the coordinates, i and seven, i is the row, seven is the column. That'll be equal to that random value between first row and last row. And then cells i eight, these coordinates will be populated in this case with the participant ID number which was determined by application worksheet function index 
population comma n. So this function index is used here just as it would be on the worksheet itself. The first four statement ends here with next i and again I have the sheet selecting and that's the end of the subroutine. So we've constructed the subroutine but we still need to assign it to a button so that it'll work. So I'm going to go back to the worksheet and I'm going to move to design mode, insert, and you can see there's form controls and ActiveX controls. I'm going to use a form control. I'm just going to put that right below the other form control. And you can see before I can even get it in, it's looking for the subroutine that it's going to be assigned to, also known as a macro. I named the new subroutine random sample, so I'm going to select random sample on sheet 2 and click OK. And you can see by default this is button 2. If we right click here, we can edit this text. And we can just change this to random sample. So I'll move off of this and then come out of design mode up here. And click here, you can see I have the input box. I select a range, in this case the first 18 values. Click OK. I want to draw a random sample of, let's say, 10. We can see we have the row numbers and the corresponding participant ID numbers. I hope you found this video on selecting a random sample without replacement in Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.